Okay, so at this point, we know all the different parts of the sewing machine. We know how to thread the needle of the sewing machine. We know how to load the bobbin. We already know how to use a straight stitch. Uh, next to it here, we have the zigzag option, which operates the same, only instead of the needle just going up and down, it also goes back and forth at the same time in order to create that zigzag shape. But you operate the sewing machine the same way. Today, we're going to talk about the buttonhole option and how that works. So if you look at any pair of jeans or pants that have a button and buttonhole, if you look at the buttonhole, you'll see a really interesting tight sewing pattern. That's what gives that buttonhole strength and it keeps the button in place and it keeps the fabric of that hole from ripping. And the way that works is it will first go along one direction, kind of like sewing a regular stitch, only it's going to hop back and forth, left and right, as well as up and down, and it's gonna go very slowly. And that's gonna build up that strong uh, first side of your buttonhole. Then once you complete that, you're going to turn to step two. And that is also going to cause the needle to go up and down, left and right, only the fabric's not gonna move at this point. It's just creating a left side to that buttonhole. Then we'll switch to step three, and we'll do that second long, but very thick stitch. And then finally, we move it back to the 2-4 position where the fabric won't move, the needle will just hop back and forth. And that will create that final sort of square pattern. So essentially what we're doing is sewing a square. So let's get started sewing our buttonhole. Okay. So before we get started with this buttonhole, we're going to double check the size of the hole that we need to make. And the best way to do that is to kind of pinch your fabric and you can actually feel that button underneath. So based on what I feel underneath, I know that I want my buttonhole to start right about there end right about there. The center of my button is right about there. So essentially what we're trying to do is sew a square in order for our button to pass through. So make sure that we have step one selected on our buttonhole. We're going to put our fabric in place. Bring our presser foot down. No need to backstitch with this, but just like before, we're going to start out slowly. Okay, so hopefully you can see, uh, not only is the needle going up and down, but it's going left and right, and it's created this kind of really super tight uh, zigzag strip along here. So according to my chalk marks, we've reached the end of how far I want my buttonhole to be. Now I switch to step two, and this time the fabric isn't going to move, just the needle is going to move. So just a couple rotations like that, and that has basically created what is going to be the left side of 
my buttonhole. What's important about this is as you see the needle going back and forth, left and right, I'm gonna turn the hand crank towards me until I make sure that the needle is on that right side. The needle has to be up in order for us to move to step three, but we wanna make sure that that needle is on the right side. So now we're ready to move to step three. And now we're going to slowly run our top stitch. Okay, so I, I kind of have to use um, the holes in the presser foot and the chalk marks to tell when I need to stop. I'm pretty sure I've gotten to the end here. I'm gonna crank it with the hand wheel just to make sure, yeah, it looks like I'm at the end. Okay, so my needle is up out of the fabric and now I'm gonna move it back to that two, four setting. Okay, and you see it going back and forth, closing off that buttonhole, closing off that square. My needle is up. I raise the presser foot. I move my fabric off to the left. I'll clip it on my seam ripper, that, or my, um, my thread cutter there. And there you can see I have what resembles the buttonhole that you would see on a pair of jeans or any kind of uh, pants that use a button. So I'm gonna clip off my little extra bits that we have here. And now do the same on this back side here. Don't wanna cut our, um, what we've actually sewn. We just wanna cut that extra piece off here and there, okay? Now, the final step in order to finish this, we're going to need that seam ripper. Okay, so our final step is to actually create the hole for our button to go through. And the way I'm gonna do that is with a seam ripper, this little pokey fork looking tool has a sharp blade at the bottom of the fork. And I can use that to now cut a hole in my fabric. But I have to be very careful that I'm not cutting any of those buttonhole stitches that I just sewed. And you should then have a buttonhole. Now the moment of truth is to see if your button will actually fit into the buttonhole and everything line up. Kind of like that. So, not too shabby. Okay, so now we have our felt fabric envelope that we used a single straight stitch uh, to create a, a seam uh, and create the envelope. We hand sewed our button onto our envelope. We used the buttonhole feature uh, on our sewing machine to create a buttonhole. And now we've got a cute little fabric envelope that we can put some of our different sewing supplies in. Very cool. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yeah.